Hey everybody, welcome to our video on importing an Excel worksheet into Access. We're going to use the transfer spreadsheet method to do this in this video. I have a previous video in which we use the transfer spreadsheet method to move data from Access into an Excel spreadsheet and that was termed an export. We were moving data out of Access. This time we're going to run it the opposite direction. We're going to pull data from Excel into Access and it'll be termed an import in this case. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet that we're going to import. I have a very very small spreadsheet here of only a couple columns and a couple rows of data. This uh, first column here, this vendor ID, is meant to be a unique ID identifying uh, each vendor. The rest of these are simply text fields or text columns. In each case I have made column names that don't have spaces in them. I, uh, I dislike having spaces in my column names and access uh, I think it, uh, it complicates the SQL and the VBA when you have to work with those columns and those fields. So I prefer to, uh, to not have spaces if possible. I'm going to close this spreadsheet and let's go over to our database. Now I have no table for this that vendor's spreadsheet to be imported into. The first time we run this import, Access is going to create the table for us and it's going to take its best guess at what it thinks each uh, column data type should be. In the case of uh, the particular columns I have here, it's going to do a pretty good job, but it might not always do that. So uh, you might have to adjust your table after import. Next, let's take a look at the code window. The transfer spreadsheet method takes several strings as parameters. One of those strings is the file name. It needs the full path to the spreadsheet that you want to import. I'm going to create a constant for that one and copy it in. We're going to call it F name, and this holds the uh, entire path to the spreadsheet we want to import. And the only reason I'm doing that is to shorten the transfer spreadsheet statement. That's a very long string to pull in there. So we're going to use the do command and then transfer spreadsheet method. The first parameter is transfer type. We have to tell it which direction we want to move data. In this case, it's going to be an import. Put a comma there. Next is the type of spreadsheet, or the version. We're going to use this version, the 12XML. That refers to the 2007 and forward versions of Excel. Our next parameter is the table name. This is, in the case of an import, this is the table that we want the data to go into. I want it to go into a table called vendors. So this is the table name that Access will give the table that it creates for us. The next parameter, our file name, we're going to put our variable for file name, our constant, which is right here, into the statement. The next parameter is has field name. So this takes a Boolean, a true or false value, and we are telling it, by telling it true, we are saying that the spreadsheet we're importing has column names as the first row. Okay, so again, if, if that were not true, you would have to you, you would answer false to that. Also, though, if you were doing that, uh, if you're answering false, uh, I, you also would have the assumption that you had an existing table for it to go into, and and that the columns will line up with one another. The next parameter is range. You can put a variety of things in this parameter. The most important thing to put in here is which tab in your spreadsheet you want to import. In my case. I gave the, f the first tab the name of vendors. Now, after you put the name of your tab, put an exclamation point after it. You can also tack onto here a range of columns and rows if you didn't want to import all of your rows or all of your columns. Now, using a range, they're going to need to be contiguous rows and contiguous columns, meaning they have to be next to each other. But if you wanted to do that, and I'm not going to do it, but I will show it, if you wanted to do that, after the exclamation point, you would simply type top left let's say A1 and then a colon and then say the, uh, the the bottom right and then close your your double quotes. Now I don't want to do that. I want to let Access and Excel figure out for us what we want to import. Now the next parameter is not used according to Microsoft so we'll leave it blank. Hit enter. So the next thing I want to do is to show a message box if we were successful. So if we fall through the uh, do command transfer method and we get down to here we would have been successful. We want to put up a message that says worksheet imported and that will be all. We'll give them uh, the information icon and only an OK button. 
and that is all there is to it. I'm going to press save, go over to our database and click import data. Okay, we got our success message, close, and then we saw over here a vendor's table popped up. And there is the data we just imported. It's only basically one line of code is all we really needed to do this. Now let's close this, take a quick look at what Access did in Design View. So it gave us a vendor ID, it made our vendor ID a number, it made it a double. Okay, I would not have chosen a double if it were me. I would have chosen a, a long integer probably. A double allows um, decimal places and, and in this particular case that's not what I would have wanted but <clears throat> it's going to work. And then again it made the rest of the columns text columns just fine. Now let's close that. I'm going to run this again. If you run this and import data into an existing table it simply runs it as an, imp as an append. So we can see here that now we've got duplicates. And again let's go back to to design view very quickly and I forgot to look at what it did for indexing this first column. You can see here that, <clears throat> that it indexed it, it did index it, but it said duplicates. Okay, so that's why it allowed us to, to pull in that spreadsheet with those duplicate values a second time. Again, if, uh, if you didn't want that, you would want to modify the design of this table or if you want more control, simply design the table before you run the import. So things to look at when you're doing this, I think that I would not do what I did at first and let Access decide for me what to make each column. I personally would design the receiving table first. Of course, you'd want to make sure that it matches the data you're pulling in from your spreadsheet, but that would allow you to make decisions like making this index, this primary index, a, uh, a long integer instead of a double. Uh, you know, double is, is wasted space in this case, and, 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 and you don't need those decimals anyway. You could decide to make that a primary key to prevent pulling in duplicate data like this, right? You, uh, I'm assuming that your table is a little more complicated than the one I've done here, that you could have all kinds of other values, you know, or other, other data types, you know, uh, you know booleans and, and whatnot. So that is it for the transfer spreadsheet method. It's very simple. One single statement will do it. I hope you got something out of this. As usual, I have a link to the code in this video in the description down below. I'll also have a link to the other video I've done on transfer spreadsheet method in which we were exporting data from Access. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.